Let's see if we are live yet. It's Monday night, and that means it's time for uh, Facebook Live After Hours with Lisa. Okay, uh, people are starting to check in, I think. Harriet, possibly. <laughs> um, everyone's at different times. Karen's checking in. Excellent. From Louisiana. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Oh, okay. I have to laugh because um, I have this thing when we start doing these live things. I need to wait until everyone shows up. So I like to, to say hi and things like that. And I was uh, paying attention to a couple groups and they were not, I wouldn't say they're making fun, but uh, some of the things that they were saying was like, you know, oh, there's this, this girl up there that she does these Facebook lives and she just, uh, I guess she talks a lot with her hands. Mm -hmm, me <laughs> and she's always laughing and things can't he can't see anything um so oh michelle's checking in from uh oh dawn hey how are you haven't seen you in a while glad you're back and back or back around i love seeing all your posts from creative appliques dawn chase has checked in uh michelle from <laughs> from parker colorado excellent mildred from texas linda from pennsylvania Sherilyn, hey how are you oh we have to catch up you went on a cruise need to get the details uh, Australia, I, Ina's check-in, excellent. Um, Plano, Eric, hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. We're, I think we're gonna have a full a full house today. Um, uh, hello, Lisa, from Only. Karen is from, o your, the name of your town in Karen is it's Only in Pennsylvania or Olney? Oh, I remember Olney was Maryland, I don't know. Anyway. You're stuck with me, guys. <laughs> As I am, hands talking, giggling, laughing, having a good time. That's what we're doing. Hey, Christine, how are you? Back in the saddle, possibly? <laughs> oh, what a crazy day today. Crazy day today. Uh, I see Jesse's checking from Virginia, Oklahoma. Uh, the names are just, they're, my feed must be working because it's scrolling by really quickly. So, but that's okay. Um, hopefully everyone can hear. Um, I'm getting thumbs up so people can hear. I hope. Well, <laughs> Christine gave me an LOL with the back in the saddle comment, so she must be able to hear me. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> so, um, I'm Labatt, when, before we start doing these live things, I need to make sure I give plenty of time for people to actually log in and get the internet kicked. Uh, caught up because there is a delay just because I'm in Elbert, Colorado, and uh, things are a little bit slower out here. Oh, I saw Judy from California, Jeannie from Kentucky, Kimberly from Arizona. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Sherilyn singing the song, Back in the Saddle. Oh, what a day. So I'm glad everyone was able to check in. Glad this was a this looked like to be a popular topic, kind of a, a quick overview of all the programs. You have to remember, this is only an hour long, so I got quite a few messages asking about questions, about which are really tech support type things, and we aren't doing any tech support stuff, um, these live videos. There's just no way. Plus, um, why would you want to wait until Monday to get help? So tech support's always available. You just have to go to the Embrilliance website, click on contact us, send them a message. If you don't understand what they wrote you or they responded with you, send them a message back and say, I don't understand. They get that from me all the time. So it's okay. Just you want to basically uh, repeat what you think they said or can you clarify this or just have a conversation. So kind of like what we can have here. Oh, good. Eric says he can hear me perfectly well. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so we I survived Chicago. I haven't seen any of my Chicago ladies checking. We had two gentlemen in Chicago. Uh, full house. Fabulous, fabulous uh, time there for our three days of classes. And we will be doing it again next year. I just have to set the dates. So... I got some kind of good news for anyone in the Atlanta area. I um, connected with a hotel today in Atlanta, Georgia area, and um, they 
it looks like we'll be scheduling something. Oh, Kathy's checking in. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, <laughs> I should be having a margarita. Kathy and I went to uh, the Mexican restaurant with um, Christine when we were in Chicago. It was, um, I went there a couple nights in a row. It was a good Mexican restaurant. So anyway, I, 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 I'm scheduling all over the place here. Um, my schedule is slowly being updated on the website. This year left, there's <laughs> only a little few months left. I can't believe where 2019 went. Holy smokes. I have Deco Summit. That is taking place in uh, October at Racoma, their headquarters in Miami. The link to that is, whoops, that way. I need to put that arrow. Someone told me about the arrow. I have to point this way. Um, on the education link for um, on my website, which is so-bubbles.com, you'll see my schedule. Deco Summit's coming up in October with the link to get more information on that. In November, I'm in Australia for uh, two days of classes with Echidna Sewing Products. So anyone is interested in going to that, link again is on my education page. I've already started getting the trade show. People are working on the trade shows and we all know that I participate in the everything embroidery market. They have set their dates for Biloxi, Mississippi, and that is taking place in March. So I've got my classes done. I have to get them all. Um, yes. Kim's the one that said, use the arrow pointing the other direction. Uh, uh, Biloxi, everything embroidery market. Classes are submitted, but registration is not going to open for a while. Applique Getaway, they have set their dates in June. Applique Getaway takes place in uh, Irving, Texas. So that will be in June. Before, In conjunction with both of those events, I always do some sort of hands-on classes, usually the day before the, the show. So watch my website for those informations. Um, we, we hope to have fun. Like I said, besides that... Um, next year is going to prove to be interesting. I'm waiting for contracts from Houston, Nashville, and like I said, um, Atlanta. So those are, are three more in addition to the two. So we'll see what other place I can get. Oh, and then Chicago. I have to fix that, figure that in because I'm going to do that Chicago one again. Fabulous location. It just worked out really well. And since I didn't have to bring so much because it's already set up. <laughs> Gotta love that place. Anyway, okay, enough chatting about my schedule, but you can always find it on my website and click on information. And Eric has so kindly posted the link in the feed. Um, I think I saw it come through that he also posted the link for tech support. So if anything that I'm saying, if you have questions and it's not working like I'm showing on your computer, the link to tech support's there and they answer every single question. Okay, so... <sighs> Since I'm going to put this on YouTube, I'm going to start fresh because I'm going to chop it off here. They don't need to hear all the chatty stuff beforehand because it, it's on YouTube, so it's for good. So my name is Lisa Shaw, and today's broadcast is going to be on all the Embrilliance programs. So we are um, going to do a quick overview, and you can find out all the information about the programs on the Embrilliance website, but you're getting my little condensed version because so many times I go to a trade show or have classes or see questions even on Facebook. People saying, um, I have Embrilliance. Oh, well, <laughs> if you're in the Embrilliance group, we all have Embrilliance. <laughs> but Embrilliance is the name of the company. It's also the name of the platform. And each program has a job. So you need to know... Um, if you're looking for software, first of all, you want to make a, I usually suggest making a list of what do you want to be able to do. And once you, um, have your list of, of things that you want to do, then you can go and figure out what software, which program does that. Because the, when Embrilliance came about, they didn't, they don't have the thought that you need to buy everything at one time. We over the years and other software programs, you had to, you had no choice. You bought a big program, even if all you wanted to do was open a design, add a name, change some colors, and send it to your machine. You had to buy a big old program that does just that. So, and Brilliance has little programs, and yes, you can buy them all. <laughs> Trust me, we can help you with that, <laughs> but. If you want to do certain things, you need you don't have to buy them all. 
So I'm going to switch on over to the software. And the first one we're going to talk about is the thumbnailer program, because this is probably the, um, my, I don't know how I can live without, um, thumbnailer. Now I'm running it on a Mac, but i I'm going to show windows. So if you notice, I got this a window open that says windows level seven. That's because on my, I run a Mac and I run the software natively on a Mac, but in brilliance runs natively on both Mac and windows. So why is thumbnailer so important? Okay. First of all, if you happen to have a folder that has designs in it, so I have one on my desktop called designs and I go into my birth stat folder. I see pictures of my designs because I have thumbnailer installed and I thought I turned it all off. All thumbnailer does is when you open the, um, oh, I'm running the Mac. When you install thumbnailer, <laughs> you install it. It asks you what formats that you want to see on your computer of what pictures you want to see. I usually say choose select all because if you want to see all your designs on your computer, including your graphic, your studio cut files for your uh, silhouette or for your brother's scan and cut, it will show you pictures of those. If you have a long arm quilting machine and you have quilting files, it will show you pictures of those all your embroidery files. Now, if you only want to see your a specific format and everything else you don't want to see, uncheck those options. But all you do is choose select all or the formats that you want. I usually like to say check to have my files inside of zips showing, which is an option that's listed here, but it could take a little bit for it to generate thumbnails from a zip file. So you just have to um, be a little bit patient, click okay. And now no matter what folder you happen to go into, if you go to your, my designs folder here, and I will say, go to my butterfly folder. I see a little itty bitty pictures of my butterflies or into my designs. I have, um, let's see, lost my my pictures. These are test files of things that I'm digitizing. So these are all my little test designs. So I see pictures of them. Now people, when I have my files set up as icons to see pictures of them, the only thing that thumbnailer does is show you the pictures. The way that they're displayed in Explorer is set up by windows. And I'm running Windows 7, so I just go to my little option here that says, how do I want to view them? I choose my large icons, or I can choose to view them as small icons. However it is, I want to see them. Large makes most sense to me, being able to see pictures. Now, there, if you're running Windows 10 or um, Windows 8 or even Windows 7, if you want them always to look like this, this is, has nothing to do with Thumbnailer. This is a Windows operating system thing. All you need to do is go to the um, folder and search options or the view. And there are step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this in the thumbnailer manual. But when you go to the uh, view options here, there's an op, there's a listing here that says apply, apply this view to all folders. And that's why no matter what folder I click on, I see large thumbnails because I chose that. Instructions are also available from Google. So if you don't feel like watching this video again and you want to know how to do this, go to Google and type in, how do I change the size of my icons? It'll give you these instructions, say apply to all folders, and then they'll all view in the same direction. And that is what Thumbnailer does. And Eric has is putting it right in the... Um, <laughs> He's added a comment into the um, comments here because everyone says, how do I open designs into Thumbnailer? Well, you don't. All Thumbnailer does, he's, Thumbnailer is like the perfect live-in maid that you don't have to give instructions to. They just do their job. And Thumbnailer's job is to show pictures of your designs as little icons. That's his job. That's all it does. And it does it very well. And it doesn't stop doing it until you stop, tell it to stop doing it, but it just doesn't. So 
You don't open designs into it. It's just a little program and it shows you pictures of designs so that you know exactly what you're viewing. Now, I'm going to shut down my Windows um, program here because I prefer to run in the Mac and it will just behave better. So this is my Embrilliance program. Now, as I mentioned, I have all the programs installed, but each program it gets installed into the platform. So what we're looking at here is the Embrilliance platform with various modules installed. So when you, we, people say, well, I have the basic Embrilliance. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not sure what basic is. Basic could be Express. Express pretty much has no buttons. It is the free program. It is the platform. It is what the purpose of Express or the basic program, as some people like to call it, is to install a BX font, click on the big letter A so that you can use your lettering tool to type your word, select the font that you installed, and there it shows up. Um, Harriet says you can select your thumbnail or icon and it opens design and in brilliance. Opening designs into the Embrilliance platform has nothing to do with thumbnailer. That's a Windows operating system. Yours is set up properly. Some people have their setup to open into Adobe Acrobat, and that has nothing to do with thumbnailer. That and there you that's a Windows Explorer function, nothing to do with thumbnailer. The only thing thumbnailer does, only thing, is show you a picture of your design. It's a little tiny program. That's all it does. So when you have it set up, so if you double click on a design and it opens into Embrilliance, that's a Windows operating system function. So, and that can easily be done. There's lots of instructions, uh, tech support. If you need help setting that up, tech support answers that question 50 times a day. Um, it's also listed in the thumbnailer manual because even though it has nothing to do with thumbnailer, it's a common question. <laughs> so they put it in the manual there or in the FAQ. So that has to do with that. But let's talk about Embrilliance platform. So this is the, the platform. Express is just the platform itself. Install BX, use the lettering tool, type your name, that's all it does. The next program we'll talk about, oh, Harriet, you have to remember, I get excited when I'm talking, so you don't have to say, oh, in a tiny voice. We're, we're all good here. You're my girl, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, I get excited about this because it's like, uh, and I have to sit here and I probably shouldn't talk with my hands because remember they were making fun of me in the other group because I was talking with my hands. All right. The entry program or the program that they called it essentials for a reason. Okay. And the essentials program it does everything that we want to do on a regular basis every day. Open designs, merge designs, combine them in together, resize, add lettering. When you resize, it recalculates the stitches, color sorting, you name it, the basic functions every day. That's essentials. And the name is spot on awesome. So when people say, well, what program should I start with? Well, we all, I always say start with essentials because what do you want to do? And they say, well, I want to resize designs. I want to add lettering. And the buttons for essentials, this is our lettering button. Resizing is done by just grabbing a design. Let me go and open a design here just to have one on this screen because it's empty here. Go grab an adult beverage. <laughs> Let me just go open this design here. This is, oh, here we go. Why not? We have this beach design. So say we wanted to choose a different hoop in essentials. I can just go up here to choose a different hoop, select, a hit, click apply, click OK. I have my design here in my hoop. Let me rotate my hoop. This is shown in quick tip video number one. I can select my design, choose the fit to hoop option here, and kaboom, resize, save, recalculate, and ready to go to my machine. That's the essential stuff. I wanted to add a name. This says beach on it. So say I wanted to add um, the wording that says vacation. So I'd click on the big letter A, which is up here, and it puts the ABC on the side. I go to my lettering tab, and I can type in oh, 
V-A-C-A-T-I-O-N. And I can click enter and that puts vacation sort of on my screen. I'll make it a little bigger so we can actually see it. Oh, how about if I did it vertical? This is a vertical text. This is all part of um, essentials. Kaboom. I can also choose fit to hoop. Make that really big. Ah, oh, kaboom. Look at that. Slide it up over here. This, these are things that you want to do, and that's essentials. So adding designs, doing a color sort, changing things, being able to do that. That's the essentials stuff. So when people say, I want the program that's going to do the basic stuff I do every single day, essentials is your go-to program. Next up, we have Alpha Tricks. Alpha Tricks is the needle up here that says ABC next to it. Okay. This is how you import a font. The only thing that Alpha Tricks will add to Essentials, it adds, so it has its own little job, is the ability to map alphabet designs. And I did a whole live broadcast on this a few weeks ago. Taking, when I say mapping designs, that's when you get a uh, design collection, a.pez, b.pez, c.pez, individual files. You think it was a font, but it's just a, um, it's just a collection of letters that you and I know are letters, but the software has no idea they're letters. So you can use alpha tricks to map them to the keyboard. It is also, um, Alpha Tricks allows you to rename BX fonts that you get from other sources. So say you get them from the Itch to Stitch or Jolson's or Creative Appliques or Designs by Juju. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's over 150 websites that sell BX, but you want to rename them. That's what Alpha Tricks can do. Okay. Um, I have a couple questions here. I'm just going to go through since... I've covered two programs. I don't want to miss anything. Okay. Um, Carlissa, when you make a fit to hoop, do you have issues with density? It's us all of us. Um, as far as sizing goes, that sizing has to do with design to begin with. Whenever you resize, do a test. So because it depends on the design that you're working with. Okay. Um, Lupe is asking how many fonts does essentials come with? Essentials comes with 12 scalable nearest connecting point object based fonts. They have all sorts of superpowers. I talked about them in a previous live, but you can get more information on the fonts on the Embrilliance website and click on the Essentials tab. And it has them all listed there. Um, they're listed. Um, Kim says the fonts that look light purple in your fonts are the ones pre-installed. Yes, they also do not have a needle next to them because they are native object-based BX fonts. Um, Harriet says she resisted Alpha Tricks for so long. So glad she gave in. Uh, Ginger loves renaming her fonts. Um, and Eric says that it comes with 12 scalable object based fonts. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> he, his, his comments may come in quicker for you guys because I'm doing the streaming thing. But anytime you do anything with resizing and essentials, it does a fabulous job of resizing. It, it, kaboom, it does a great job of recalculating the stitches. But if the design wasn't digitized well in the first place, or if it was auto digitized, or if it um, didn't stitch out well in the first place, you shouldn't resize it. I, I always recommend doing a test sew anyway, especially if you're pushing the envelope. Once you get used to what you're looking at in the software, like I'm looking at these designs, um, I've stitched them out. I, these are going to stitch out rather well. So because they were pretty stitch intensive uh, to begin with, so I could make them uh, bigger. And the I went from five by seven, I think this was. It's 200% bigger, and these are going to stitch out fabulously, fabulously. So it all depends on the designs in the first place as far as the restitching goes. But fit to hoop is super duper simple because it's the button that's right here. This is an essentials thing. It allows you to select your design, and it fits it to the hoop. So, and whatever you have selected is what fits to hoop. So if you noticed, I selected just my text before the vacation, resized it, and it fit to hoop. Okay. It comes with 12 built-in fonts. Alpha Tricks allows you to map alphabet designs to create your own um, fonts in your font list. So you can take an alphabet collection, map it. That's an alphabet tricks. Angela wants to know if you can organize by size. 
you can rename your fonts any way you want. So watch, the, you'll want to check into my, um, I need to put a, a link for the Alphatrix live broadcast. We mapped fonts, we renamed fonts, we went to town in Alphatrix. So it does, there's all that information is on the, um, if you also go to the Embrilliance YouTube channel, each program has a playlist. So there's one for, there's a, the quick tip playlist. There's the essentials playlist. There's a lit playlist just about things you can do with lettering, which does alpha tricks and essentials. Then there's an alpha tricks playlist. All sorts of stuff there. Okay. So now alpha tricks, if you get alpha tricks on its own, you can't, you can resize your fonts because you can, it's a font mapping program, but, and you can bring in a design on its own, but you can't, the Alphatrix does not have a stitch processor for embroidery designs that are not letters. Okay. If that makes sense. So anything you do with the lettering tool with Alphatrix on its own can be resized. But if you bring in a design, because you can merge in one design, it you can't resize it, you can't color sort it. And um, if any of you have ever used um, alphabets that are applique, and you probably want to color sort those. So if you have alpha tricks and you're saying, hey, how come I can't color sort? It's because you need essentials to color sort, because that's its job. Each program has a job. Think of Embrilliance as a house. Okay. And then it has this little add on addition, which is thumbnailer. Okay. <laughs> but the house has all these rooms. Okay. And when you get a program, you basically get the key to the room that you've got the program for, and you're allowed to play in that room. So if you get the essentials key, you can open the essentials door and you can do all the tools and functions that are in the essentials room. When you add alpha tricks, you can get the key to the Alphatrix door, you unlock it, and now you can go in between the Alphatrix and the Essentials room without leaving the house. Stay there. So each program has a job and it doesn't do the other main functions of the other jobs. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Oh. Next on my list, Alphatrix. Enthusiast. Now, Enthusiast, it's kind of, con I, I get the confusion because Essentials is price A and Enthusiast is price B and it costs more. I don't remember the prices. They're all on the Embrilliance website. But because Enthusiast costs more, people think that it, it contains Essentials. But it's like only $30. And once you see all the functions that Enthusiast does, you'll understand why it does a lot more than just $30 difference. So if you get enthusiast on its own, you can't do those things like fit to hoop and resize your stitches and do the color sort and remove hidden stitches when they overlap. And you don't get any fonts. Alphatrix comes with no fonts. Enthusiast comes with no fonts. The only fonts that are in the program, 12 built in object-based fonts come with essentials. Okay. Enthusiast. Now, when you get enthusiast, when you look at your screen, you it you have more buttons. What's added are is the precise positioning buttons here that are listed. You get stitch editing that's listed here, edit stitches of this design. And under the utility menu, you have a whole bunch of other things such as knockdown stitching, instant repeat, mirror times four, carousel, all these cool functions that are listed here. So these are all part of the enthusiast program. And when you add them to essentials, you've basically created a full customizing suite because with stitch editing, it, yes, the other things like knockdown stitching is wicked cool, but stitch editing, that is what allows you to get, take a design. And this was shown on the, um, in brilliance, brilliant and brilliance group. I had to go and buy this design today. Thank you very much to my tribe. <laughs> I had to go buy the Border Collie one because I have, well, Bubba. Um, I, he's an Australian Shepherd Border Collie mix. And I didn't see an Australian Shepherd, which is just kind of funny. So I had to buy this today. This is a, a design and it only has three colors. So if there's in, uh, if you only wanted one of these, 
you'd have to add color stops because they all stitch each color at one time. So this is going to be color number one, then color number two is shading on top of it, and color number three is the black. So there's no way to... Someone said, uh, always, whenever it says, oh, ungroup them. Well, there's three colors in your object pane. Embroidery software is made up of stitches. So it doesn't know there's actually four dogs here. It sees three colors and a whole bunch of stitches. So what's key with machine embroidery and with Embrilliant software is when something is grouped and every single design you bring in a stitch file is grouped by nature, okay? When you bring in a design, like this design is grouped. What grouping means is when I put my mouse cursor, and I, I can click on the design in my hoop and I can move it anywhere I want in the hoop. So it's grouped. If I ungroup it, so I'm going to select it, I'm going to go to my edit menu and I'm going to choose ungroup. Okay? This, the ungroup function controls how things are clicked on in this design page. Meaning, if I click on the dog, see where my mouse cursor is, and I click on it, and I had ungrouped it, it basically ungrouped that color. So that means if I move this, it's going to get out of registration. So the only thing that ungrouping does is separate the colors in your object pane so that when you try and select them in the display pane, you select it by color. You're now no longer selecting the entire design. So uh, I did not get the Siamese cats, but it's basically the same thing. I got the border collie. So I'm going to, I'm going to group this again so that I don't lose my registration. But yes, embroid this is from Embroidery Library and they had a whole slew of them and they were all adorable, but Bubba needed to have the border collie. So I'm going to go back up here to edit and choose to group them together. Okay. Uh, Pam, you are enabling me. <laughs> She's helping me spend money. She found it. I had five minutes to find it and I didn't find it. So I'm going to have to look for the sketch one, but I digress. So with enthusiast, if you want to snag out one of these dogs, key point is I'm going to take this one, um, how about I grab this one in the upper right corner here? So I'm going to zoom in on him. So I'm going to go up here and make sure that I can see what I'm working on because I want to be able to, to um, see because you have to be able to lasso around him. So I want to make sure I can see the stitches. Okay. So I have showing on my screen what it is I want to grab. I'm going to go over to stitch editing. That's this button here. That's enthusiast. I'm going to grab my lasso and I'm going to use the freehand one because that basically allows me to draw a rubber band or a lasso freehand around the stitches I want to select. So I'm going to grab this, put my mouse cursor in the white space here, left click and hold and watch my mouse cursor, I gotta go slowly so I don't lose anything. Let's hope the internet connection behaves. I'm gonna go up in between these guys here. Three, three. There we go. Oh, I ran out of mouse. Three, three. Make sure, oh, almost snagged that toe. Wow. Wow. A little crazy there. But do you see that rubber bandy lasso y thing that's going around the. Thing that is my last sew, and I just need to make sure that that last sew grabs encompasses around all the stitches. I don't have to end it, but it's just around all the stitches. And then I release my mouse button, and you see they all highlighted. That means I selected them. While they're selected, I can go to the copy button here, top of my screen, go to copy. Gonna go over to a new design page, and I'm gonna hit paste. I'm going to get out of a stitch edit mode here. Boom. And now I have my dog. <laughs> I have just the one little dog that's sitting here. And I can do that for each individual one. Just select it and copy and paste it. Um, being able to just snag parts of things without having to go layer by layer or color by color 
is fabulous. And this is just, you know, this was easy because it was nice, a nice area in here. Now, the other thing is, say we wanted to, this design, what if I wanted to go and grab just these sunglasses out of here? Well, there's a layering in here, right? There's, you know, there's, they're overlapping each other. As you can see, this little guy, he's right in the top. And if I go into, oh, let's unselect him just so I can see, just to show you, just, I'm going to ungroup him, not unselect him. I'm going to show you that if I, ungroup him so that you can select by color that doesn't help no not select by color I did ungroup sorry ungroup boom if i say want to select the color of this pink you see that pink is in both colors and that green is that's in that one but how about this yellow yellows all over the place so trying to select there's no way to just copy and not they're not connected. They all stitch out together because it's a nice sorted design. So let me go and group this back up together just so I don't accidentally move something. And I'm going to go to edit and choose to group it again. And I'm going to snag just the sunglasses. So I'm going to go back into stitch editing. Use my lasso here. I'm going to be a little wild here because I want to just do it quick and dirty. It's selected wild stuff. I don't really care because I'm going to go to copy, go to a new design page, click on paste. I'm going to zoom in on this. Boom. On my selected stitches, go into select mode here and look at that. I can go through here. Whoops. And I can just hit the delete key on the colors that don't belong. That one does, that one does, this guy. Boom, that one's no good. That one's no good. That one's no good. That one's no good. Boom. And I grab this little guy here. So if I go into stitch editing, I can go in and move this guy. Delete these stitches. Boom, boom. And left click and right click and jump in short ties. And now I have my little sunglasses that I can use. So it's, it's easy enough. And I didn't break the original design. I just left the original design as it is. Using stitch editing. And I did that real fast. I did a whole video on just enthusiasts with stitch editing. The enthusiast playlist has the step-by-step -step things. But stitch editing is wicked cool because, oh my gosh, you can take apart anything you want. You can move individual stitches. You can, you know, uh, change, change up things the way that you wanted them to do. Um... If color is on what you want and you don't want, will it work the same? Harry, I'm not sure I understand that question, but um, maybe I'll get back. I'll, I'll think on that. I'm not sure if the color. Oh, if you hide the colors. Maybe that's what you're asking. I'm not sure. There's so many different things that you can do with enthusiasts. And that's in addition to, I mean, once I have this little guy, okay, that was just stitch editing. That's how I took him out. So if I go and I take him and say, I want to make a border of these so I can do a, uh, Rick Rack Border. I can have him selected. I can go to my utility menu. I can say instant repeat and I can say, how many across do I want? And I can maybe flip every other one so they're upside down, stagger them, and make a nice little little rose. Um, the part of the sunglasses that was under the ball, can you add that back in? Um, first of all, these little sunglasses are um, so tiny, no one is paying attention to that little thing. There's nothing to add in. It wasn't there to begin with, so you can manually add stitches if you really, really, really needed to. But um, like I said, this little sunglass, one of these guys, one of this one, he is, he's a little tiny, tiny little guy. He's, at, well, at this size, he's, I guess the original one was thinking five by seven, <laughs> but no, I made him 200. So he's actually bigger. He is almost two by two. So he is kind of big. If I was thinking that's a, actually kind of big for the original. I took him and I resized him in the other program and then made a border. Making a border out of this size probably isn't useful. But um, you could you add it? Yes. Um, let me to answer the question. Let me go back and see if I can zoom in. 
I have to get to the last stitch on this guy here. I have to be in stitch editing first. Bum -ba -dum. This would be an enthusiast function. And if I right click on this stitch, there are, there's an option that says insert stitches. And I'm going to choose after just because um, I want them to come after this. And you would left click once your mouse cursor gets going. You see I'm kind of hanging out here. You can left click and you can add stitches. I got to start closing my windows because my um, mouse cursor is going into overtime here. You can see I'm getting the little spinning wheel because I'm doing too much and I'm not getting the control I want. But you can left click to add your stitches. You'd make it a lot nicer looking than I do. Right click to end and you can even that up. So yes, you do have the ability to add little stitches and move them into place. So it, you'd want to take a better time than doing that. But it's not too bad for having, you know, sip a beer and talking at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> but that's that little, when you have a stitch selected, that pop-up menu, this again is enthusiast. This lets you insert little stitches. So think about, um, okay, you have the green on the eyeglasses and you know how it goes, it stitches one eyeglass and then jumps to the next one. You can insert stitches underneath so it travels. So this saves time in the machine. If that's something that's important to you because you're stitching this sunglass on as a border on 50 hats, so you wanna save some time as opposed to jumping. That's stitch editing. You can get, you are down to the, to the stitch level. So you can really do some crazy things at this. Crazy things. Just remember, every so often, you need to go back to your original size. And I do that by hitting the zero key on my keyboard so that you can actually see, you know, not get lost in the stitches. You'll notice on some of the groups, people say they get lost down the rabbit hole. Well, that's because they get way too involved on what they're doing and they're like using a magnifying glass. And when they zoom out, they're like, wow, I probably didn't need to do that much work at that size because you're so zoomed in. So make sure you zoom out every so often because it won't really make a difference. <laughs> Christine says I should take a breather here. Um, <laughs> so yes, yes, I get a little crazy. Okay, and I have to get... Got its enthusiast has its own set of functions, so you can see just with that little bit of that little bit plus knockdown, instant repeat, blah blah blah, all those other things, it does its own huge amount of stuff that you can do, huge amount of stuff. So I'm gonna close some of these to hopefully speed up my computer. Close, don't save. No, we don't need any more mutilated files here. Ding ding, don't save. Ding ding. Don't save. And we're just going to open it. Oh, we'll close him too. Why not? Close everything. And Kim said she needed to know how to add stitches. Okay. So the other program that has a, a job, let's see. How's this one? This is a patriotic balloon. Beautiful design from Aegis Embroidery. Okay. Beautiful design. The next program that has its own job is um, Density Repair Kit. Now, uh, Density Repair Kit, the purpose of it is to take a design that stitches nicely, and this one stitches beautifully from Aegis Embroidery. It's a gorgeous design. But you wanna stitch it on a different fabric, so you might need to change the, the density of it, okay? Because not, Every design was digitized to be stitched on every type of fabric. So you're looking at a design. It can, density Repair Kit comes with a 3D viewer. This 3D viewer is a density map. And there's a nice video on this showing a horrible design, but it's very effective as how it works. But the density map shows your design as 3D stitches, or as um, I call this a weather map. So even though there's quite a few stitches, this design is about a five by seven and there's 26,000 stitches. That's pretty stitch intensive. So I wouldn't want to stitch this on a t-shirt. Okay, not a good idea because that's a lot of stitches. You're going to have the balloons are going to be, they're sticking out. That's not a good thing that's sticking out there. It's the weather map shows the temperature of the needle pretty much. That's why I like to say blue is happy. Blue is calm. This is um, a very happy design. Yes, you will see some bits of red. So there is a little bit of, um, because it has to overlap, that's the compensation, that stitch is going on each other. That happens. 
And then the next view that's on here, and these are all shown in deep more detail and more talking on the DRK uh, playlist. But what this program does is it allows you to click on your project advisor here. Choose the fabric that you want to stitch it on. So if I want to stitch this on a, on a knit t-shirt, I choose my knit t-shirt. I choose set project because that's a DRK setting. And my stitches go from 26,000 down to 19,000 and it kind of reorganizes them so that's not going to be such a stiff, dense design. If the type of embroidery that you like to do is sketch designs, applique, and lettering, you have no need for DRK unless you just want the density map to see the density of your designs. You don't really want to remove stitches from sketch designs, applique, or lettering. It's not That's not what it was designed for. It was designed so that you could take a, a, a an embroidered design, a filled design. This is DRK. This allows you to see a filled design and change the fabric that it's stitching on, okay? So that you can not have it be so bulletproof, so solid on that type of pro product, okay? So it, it does reduce the stitches. And then you do a test sew to make sure that what you're getting, and you do a test sew on the type of fabric you chose. <laughs> I had someone that, that they changed their DRK. They changed it to stitch for a t-shirt and then they stitched it on felt. Well, uh, and that was a test sew. Well, okay, that but that didn't, the purpose of DRK is to change it so that it stitches better. I, get, I don't know why it would, I wouldn't stitch it on felt anyway, unless you're stitching on felt for a reason. But to te do a test sew, Don saying, repeat that, please. <laughs> because those of us that have been in this business for a while um, think that <laughs> we, it's a funny, it's like an inside joke. And felt is like, it's everything looks great on felt. Okay. Um, but so when you're changing, if you're doing a resizing or you're changing the density, you should do a test sew and you should always do a test sew on the type of fabric that you are going to be stitching on. Okay. That way you know it's going to work or not. DRK, that's its, that's its one big job. There, It also has density tuning. I have a link to a blog post if anyone wants to know how to do that. That's like for fixing things, adding more stitches to a specific color, changing fill stitches. The capabilities there, but you better really love that design to be doing some some major tweaking to it because that it's, it's, it, it's not hard, but it's, you're gonna have to do a test sew again. So you better really love that design to be able to fix something. So density repair kit on its own, it does so much for filled embroidery designs that um, that is its purpose. Now I have a sample here that I, um, because if you notice on my toolbar, hold on, let me open this, my eyeball design. And let me go and change my hoop back to my five by seven hoop, just so that we're not looking at this gargantuan hoop anymore. It's an eyeball design. DRK has two functions. One is the project advisor, which is where you choose the fabric. I kind of glossed over the density tuning that's there. The, to the right of this, we have the vacuum cleaner. It's the sweep. Now, when you this little this is just an eyeball design, and sometimes you have a design. Let's go and go to the 3D map here, and can you see that it is very uh, the hot spots? Let me go back to my show my hoop right here. See how it's got a hot spot in that section there? It's kind of a yellow. It's not. It's actually not too bad, but you have a conglomeration of stitches there. If you have everything else is blue, but there's one conglomeration of stitches. What the Vacuum cleaner does, it like cleans out the dust bunnies. So it will go through and when you click on that hot spot button, you see how it got rid of all the extra stitches that were in just those areas and it left everything else alone. So if you have a design that, and it happens a lot when people digitize eyeballs for some reason because they all pucker in the middle and then you got these two dents looking at each other because your eyes dented in the middle. If you run the vacuum cleaner, it gets rid of the dust bunnies, makes it nicer and flatter, and you won't have those thumper things in it 
and you didn't have to change the project advisor setting. The only thing it got rid of was the dust bunnies. So when you want to change the fabric, you use the project advisor and it also gets rid of the dust bunnies at the same time. But when you have a design that stitches really well, except for a couple dimple areas, that's just super dense, little clumpy things, the vacuum cleaner gets rid of those. So that's, that's, it's, it's really is a powerful job. It's super easy. You save your file. You're ready to go. Um, uh, and stitch, stitch the design. You don't have to do anything else to it. Finally, finally, we have stitch artist. Now stitch artist is our digitizing module. And a lot of people over the years, digitizing has gotten a, a, a bad name. And that's because over the, when you first bought your embroidered machine 25 years ago, you bought digitizing software. Did we, uh, in the home market, you bought one big program and it digitized, but and it also customized two things. Well, and brilliance came about and they broke it out into different programs. I already did all the customizing ones. Those work with existing stitch files. Digitizing, which is stitch artist. That's when you want to create your own designs from scratch. Juanita asks, is essentials and DRK enough to have? Sure. That's the beauty of essentials. You get the software that you want. I mean, I know plenty of people that have essentials to customize, resize, do their things. DRK lets them adjust the density. Perfect. You know, that's, that's the beauty. You buy this, you don't have to buy in any particular order. You don't have to get alpha tricks and enthusiasts, then dense your repair kit. You can just get essentials and dense your repair kit. Happy as a clam. And I always rec recommend Thumbnailer because it just does its job. <laughs> and once you have it installed, you don't know how you lived without it. <laughs> so, but digitizing, that's a whole other, whole other, other scenario. And that is for when you want to take a graphic file and create an embroidery design. Now in Brilliance, all the other programs, the customizing programs can be added in any order, any combination, it's not required. Stitch Artist has three levels. And you can start at level one, upgrade to level two or three, or you can start with level two and upgrade to three eventually, or start with level three right from the get-go and you have the whole thing. So there's, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, it doesn't matter what level you start with. You're never going to pay more than the original because the way that Brilliance has done their upgrades is that if you start at one and you upgrade to two, you're paying basically the same amount as if you just started with two in the beginning. I love the way they've done it in that someone who isn't sure they want to digitize doesn't have to invest thousands of dollars and upgrades and every year because other companies make you upgrade every other year uh, simply to keep up with operating systems and they add new features and you have no choice. Our upgrades are that you are up, you are at level one to do basic digitizing and that's the screen that I have open here. You have simple tools. You have the ability to open a bitmap, a JPEG, a raster type file image, PNG. You can open true type fonts. The buttons show your itch, image or your stitches here. And then you have your drawing tools. You have the way to draw with points or freehand drawing, or you have the magic wand. And there's all the videos are on the Stitch Artist playlist on how to use the tools to create what it is that you want. And then you have all these stitch types. And this is level one. So you draw an object. So I'm going to just go here to the fly out draw my object and have to, and now once I have an object drawn, I just have to apply stitches to it. So if I want this to be filled, I click on the fill stitch. If I really wanted it to be an applique, I click on applique. I mean, it's all, it's, you draw an object, you assign stitches and you can put stippling around designs. You can make freestanding lace. You can create appliques, motif fills, emboss stitches. Spend some time on the Stitch Artist playlist and you'll see all these things that you can do with level one. It's a fabulous little program and what a great way to get your feet wet starting. Now, when you come into 
digitizing. Some of us come in with a background of already owning another software program. So I came in with way too many software programs under my belt. So level one to me was very limiting because one of the major things that it didn't allow you to do or didn't have was the column stitch tool. And the column stitch is used a lot when you're doing logos, lettering, uh, column stitch. And you guys have to take my class. I have to get this down because the column stitches, that's, that was my, my first foray into digitizing was a column stitch and learning what it was because I had no clue. I was a sewer, a sewist, whatever you want to call us. I had zero background. I didn't even have software and I took a digitizing class. Oh, talk about being overwhelmed. Well, the column stitch allows you to um, set your angles so that when, whoops, uh, where my, my software is lagging because of the internet connection here the joys of being in Bufu. You, it allows you to change the angle whoopsie, of the stitches so that it goes around a corner, so that your, your letters turn. So the angle variates, and that's a lovely little curve, isn't it? It goes changes as opposed to being a solid one angle, like a fill has one angle, Column stitch has two angles. So if you've ever used digitizing software before, you probably learned how to use that tool. So level one will make you feel very limited because that tool that I just lovely drew is not in level one. So level two has the turning angle. It also has the capability of bringing in, if you notice underneath where I had only image and two type fonts, it also allows me to bring in vector files. Those are your cut files. SVG, FCM, um, Silhouette Studio files, cutting machine files, and you can there come in as drawn objects so that you can automatically, you can assign stitches and you don't have to spend time drawing things. So it has um, more controls over the tools that were already in the program. For example, the fill stitch. You have a solid fill in level one. Well, in level two, you can have gradient fills and you can have feathering on your fills and you have a, you have a column stitch and you can do 3D foam lettering and you can do fringe. It's just, you have a whole bunch of controls that are, have been added to the tools. So you're, even if you started at level one and you upgrade to level two, you don't lose what you learned. Everything that you already knew how to do is there. You just now know how to do more things. Level three, this is now when you become comfortable with digitizing. If you notice, my toolbar has kind of expanded here. You've gotten a lot more controls as far as a lot more buttons, a lot of more features and functions. Level three is for someone that is um, digitizing to design um uh, for commercial use. Now, and not just I mean commercial machine, they are digitizing uh, logos for other people. They're digitizing designs to sell. They are wanting to, they have a graphic arts background and they want to streamline their drawing process. They don't want to use two programs because graphic artists use specific tools to draw their shapes. And those are the, what I'm, those tools like union and intersection and flatten and, um, yeah, graphic arts tools. If you use a silhouette software where you weld stuff, that really has nothing to do with digitizing. It has to do with drawing objects. So they added those tools, which is basically like adding a graphics drawing program to level three so that those with that graphic arts background that want to create their vector files are able to have access to those tools without going from program one program exporting bringing it in to here they can now do all their drawing in one program so these tools which are really kind of cool i mean once you get once you find out <laughs> why you want them the ability to type a name Outline it right away with a font is is super duper easy. I mean, I can click my lettering tool and oh, where'd my lettering go? There we go. Here's my lettering. A B C. What the? Let's move him over to here. Oh, I am so sorry for this delay in the in the lagging thing. 
Hopefully you guys are still hanging on with me. I haven't seen anyone leave yet. <laughs> what can happen? Um, so I have my, my lettering on my screen. I can go in my Stitch Artist level three here and I can select that, that lettering object and I can say auto outline and it automatically outlines so I can put like say a running stitch around that and maybe change the color to something else so that I can have two color um, letters. Boom, boom. Whoops, well, of course, <laughs> I need to make sure that my lettering stitches before my outline does because that wouldn't be good. So now I have lettering around it. You can also take this and inflate that shape to create our clouds around our key fobs or to create um, customize like an echo outline type or stack you know letters that have model um, uh, uh, layers on them, like a, an applique that has a satin stitch with just 3D puff on top of it. So you can use the inflation to do that. Ah, hey, glad you could join us, Sharon. Judy, what level would I need to make a continuous line drawing to do edge-to-edge -edge quilting? You can draw, you can use any level. A run, a edge, continuous edge quilting is just a running stitch, and there's a running stitch in level one. So if you want to draw, you bring in your picture of your continuous line design, go watch my red work video. I just did the, I did the one a few weeks ago on the cat. Draw your shape and boom. If you have a uh, level three, you, and you bring in that line art, there's a magic wand lined tool. And that allows you to click on the line and it will just automatically draw it for you. So there's a big, there's a difference there. But could you do it in level one? Absolutely. And you can set the stitch type to be a bean stitch, a single run, a double run, anything that you want. You have complete control over the parameters. Um, where are the previous Monday lessons stored? Well, they're all on my this Facebook page where you're watching this one. If you click on the videos link or you just scroll down through. I'm the only one. This isn't a group. This is my business page. So you can just scroll down through the Mondays or on my YouTube channel. I've been solely uploading them. And there's a, um, a playlist on my YouTube channel that will allow you to uh, view the previous Facebook Live videos. Um Lupe saying, I'm thinking of buying level two. Will that give me all the other modules? No. <laughs> Each program has a job, okay? If you buy Stitch Artist level two, it contains Stitch Artist level one. So you can digitize all the designs you want. It will. You can bring in an existing design, but you can't resize it. You can't color sort it. You can't... Um, do the essentials functions with it. You only at block fonts. There's no fonts in Stitch Artist because Stitch Artist, you digitize your own fonts. So each program has a job in which you do. So that's why I said that, you know, Stitch Artist level two is $300 and it contains level one, which is $150 or something like that. So you're definitely not going to get essentials and enthusiast and DRK, everything that I just said, just for, you know, the bundle price. So the best thing to do is write down a list of what is it that you want to do and be kind of specific so that if you say, I want to bring in existing designs and merge them together and color sort, and I want to digitize, if you look at the Stitch Artist 2 page, you will see nothing about bringing in existing designs, nothing about built-in fonts, nothing about resizing existing designs. It's all about digitizing. So each that's why there's no comparison table between essentials and enthusiast or essentials and stitch artists because there is nothing to compare they some of the functions are the same like you could change colors of, of the same type of thing but major functions are not the same in each program okay um I'm, eric you're reading my mind we are like a mind meld here <laughs> the um i usually call it like the golden trio for of customizing digitizing programs for those that are looking to get started would be essentials enthusiast and stitch artist level two so stitch artist level two so enthusiast essential stitch artist level two if you're looking to get into having a robust program those three programs will be a great place to start okay um getting all three if you're just looking at start to get in you just bought your machine and um someone told you you needed digitizing software if you ask Lisa Shaw, she's going to tell you, you probably should start with customizing software because it's really, really, really hard to digitize 
a well stitching design if you've never stitched one before. Um, it, it's, it's hard. So you want to understand how stitches work because what you see in the software is not what you'll get at the machine. If you, um, it depends on, you know, your stabilizing, your fabric that you're stitching on, your thread type, your needle. There's so much troubleshooting that goes on in the machine that you have to get that nailed. And working with designs that somebody else digitized, you can learn so much about them. So customizing is always the first place to start. And then, of course, everyone should have thumbnailer because you want to see what you have without having to open every single design. Oh, that's such a time saver. Um, Okay, let's see. So we have Curl Eye Essentials to get Enthusiast. There is no upgrade package. Correct. There is no upgrade from Enthusiast because Enthusiast doesn't do what Essentials does. So you can just get Essentials, uh, get Enthusiast and add it to your Essentials. So there is no upgrade. If they did have an upgrade to it, and it, 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 there wouldn't be one. So they would have to sell essentials or they would have to sell a big program that was the same price as both of those put together and then upgrade from one to the other. Just That's just confusing. So you just get what you want. That does what you need. Okay. Um, okay. You guys know I'm not tech support here. <laughs> so the thumbnail questions, tech support, love to answer them. Um, so, and Eric posted the link to uh, customer support as far as how to open your designs from one to the other, uh, how to get your designs into folders. That's a basic operating system question. Okay. I was at the library. I was at the, in Chicago last week. And one of the gen the gentlemen that was in my, my class, one of them, he works for the library in Chicago. And around the country, you'll notice that many of the libraries, they still exist. Even though we don't read books, hardcover books anymore, the libraries are still there. Most of them, in fact, I haven't found one that does not offer computer classes. So, and they're basic computer classes on how to uh, get your email, how to make folders, how to drag and drop files to a USB drive. He, This guy, this is what he teaches. He writes the curriculum for this type of stuff. In many of the libraries, they also have a maker section and the maker sections, that's where they make stuff. Like they have sewing machines going and 3D printers. And the one in Chicago, they have embroidery machines, computers, and they will show in Brilliance Essentials and Stitch Artist. So they don't teach hands-on classes like I do here, but they have a general idea. So that someone wants software, they give a nice uh, presentation. But the library is a fabulous free resource for us that we, you know, we all have to pay for it anyway. So you might as well take advantage of it. And they have classes. Some of them have videos that they they have recorded classes. They have one-on-one -on -one help. Sometimes they have troubleshooting sessions. You know, uh, my dad goes in with his phone because. <laughs> He has trouble with his phone and he gets sessions on his telephone. So they have all sorts of um, resources available for you. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, I'm sorry that the connection's lost, but this is recorded. It will be, I'm going to do some editing because this is, was kind of crazy and I'm, before I put it on YouTube and I'll probably never upload, but you'll always be able to find it here on my Facebook page. For those of you that are looking <laughs> Um, for if you're looking to get the software and I convinced you that you wanted to get it, I do. I am an affiliate of the program. I have coupons for various things and uh, things that I promote that I talk about. If you go to my website and um, I'll have to put that, I'll put the link in at the video uh, saying what the link is, but it's in subbubbles.com slash Facebook live and you'll be able to, um, get the information. Also, all of my class notes are on my website free. You can download them. They have to be under the shop. So if you go to sewbubbles.com, which is listed right there and you go to the shop link, you can download all my class notes, which has all the softwares being talked about. So, um, uh, let's see. Uh, we have a question. Is my enthusiasm contagious? Well, I try. <laughs> um, uh, Kim says that her local community college does classes on basic computers. Susan says, Eric and Brilliance update compatible with Catalina. I'm, I'm sure it's going to. I mean, the tech support, they keep up on this. 
you know, we are, we're not going to drop the program. <laughs> if we're not compatible, uh, then we're like all the other software that's out there. So um, I don't know. I'm sure it will be there. We have, that's, come on, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that if, if it was easy to keep programming with the Mac and to have a Mac program, everybody would do it. But in brilliance has taken the time they've developed their software. They're not, uh, it's developed from the ground up and compiled and tested on each operating system. So it, and all the functions in windows are, uh, that are, op, uh, Software related to the program related are in the Mac version and vice versa. Certain things can't be done either or because that's operating system stuff. But in general, as far as the software features go, same functions in both programs. And we're like, that's what we're known for. So we're not about to drop it um, as far as that goes. Okay. Oh, Eric, you posted my link. You posted my link to my page. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so hey, Carrie, it says she's on both the Mac and Windows. <laughs> if I made you a Wonder Woman superhero cape, would you wear it on the next video? <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> Thank you for making my night. Um, I'm not Wonder Woman. I Well, I do wonder about a lot of things. <laughs> I wonder where my keys are, where my phone is, um, why I didn't... I just lose my mind. But hopefully you guys found this a little bit little bit useful. Um, I love doing them. I look forward to seeing you here again. Same bat channel, same bat place. Um, you know the score, how it goes. And um, until next time, uh, have a great week. And um, I look forward to seeing you next Monday and online. Take care, guys. Have a great night. Bye.